summer just wouldn't be summer without the Pro One Challenge. And this year, it's bigger and better than ever. Don't shoot it when it's behind a bow. Registration filled up so quickly, they added an extra day. Meaning nearly 1,200 shooters will be here. Felt lucky. Felt lucky. Felt That's lucky. like all your shooting, isn't it? Either competing for a class win, a personal best, or even to be crowned Pro One Champion. The Pro One Challenge 2024, in its sixth year now, and this wouldn't be possible without the support of the whole cartridge company. This year we've got the normal mixture of super sporting stands, sequence stands and full use of gun single stands as well as your normal sporting stands with two targets on. So there's a real variety of targets out there, something there for everyone I feel. Since last year, Barbary has expanded, gaining new ground as well as redesigning some of their existing layouts. And it's looking good. Today we're heading out with Josh to learn how best to tackle some of these unique targets. Welcome to the Pro One Masterclass. It's good to be back. You obviously came and shot on Thursday in the weather. So we're going to take you through some of the stands that you found a little bit trickier and talk you through and hopefully put you right on a few things and find where the targets are. Yeah, certainly. Even some of the ones I did well on, I think there's a lot of people who weren't as lucky as me to hit them. We'll go through a few of the stands which I feel are a little bit more technical maybe on how to approach them or how I would approach them and sort of what I've done in terms of a setting point of view to try and catch that stuff. Interestingly, we're going to start with stand one, which wasn't an easy start. No, it actually shot a little bit harder than I thought. Um, Lots so of people dropping ones and twos. Little sort of blaze teal, a left to right sort of midi crow incoming, and a right to left chandelle going back the other way. Super sporty style stand, so you've got three singles full use of the gun, and we do a normal report pair and two simultaneous pairs. So, well, I'll have a look at this, um, see how we get on and go for that. Pretty complicated way to start. We sort of put this on a stand one, um, three singles, to sort of try and ease people into it. Got two shots, you know, get into it and then go into your on report and your sim pairs. Quite a tricky combination. I mean, singly, the targets are relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's the combinations when you've got, like, for example, even with your teal coming back down for that looper, you shoot your teal and then a lot of people go and searching for the looper and coming too far back and then racing back through it. So even with your teal coming back down for that looper, you shoot your teal and then a lot of people go and searching for the looper and coming too far back and then racing back through it. So same thing, shooting the teal, just holding out and washing the looper onto the gun as it comes through the gun, just accelerating through the line. The other sim pulse is to be in the sea of the looper again. Key thing with that midi is just making sure that you don't flash back out to a gap and pull the trigger. You know, yep. Kill the first target, come back onto your hold point, watch the midi beat the gun, and then just go into it and pull the trigger. When you're watching the singles, you're preparing yourself for the sim pairs, correct? Or sort of counting the time in flight and just paying attention yeah, to so what it's going to look like. When you're coming into your super sporting stands, obviously you will notice we have a mixture of on report and sim pairs, even Raphael pairs. So when we're looking at the single targets, we're thinking, right, where the hold points are, kill points, etc. But we're also then looking, right, once I've killed that, where will that other target be? So I've got a mental picture of where I'm going to be once I've killed that teal, for example, where the midi is going to be. You know, yeah. in relation to where it was when it was on report. Yeah, so you're not thinking, yeah, I'm going to take it on early, but you're realising it's going to be in that Exactly zone. that. So you there know where about. your whole point in your eyes are going, more importantly, so you can watch the clay through the gun and then make the same shot. Exactly. The A-bird, you're just poking front of the cover and pull yeah, the trigger, very you're simple. Looking through the gun, as soon as you see the teal beat the gun, just driving through the line and pull the trigger. B. Holding out again, just not coming back too far because it's in that tree line. Hold out, watch it through the trees, clearly see it come past the gun, then just into the back and go to it. And obviously the loop is the one you're going to sort of be a bit more aggressive on, a bit more confident. But more trust um, in the gunman. Yeah, exactly. Just more of an acceleration through it. How are you approaching this mentally? Coming you have a separate in. plan for every target. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm, I say a separate plan. It's more like reading the menu and saying, right, ABC, what's doing what, set up, hold points, feet, all that sort of stuff. Where am I killing the first target? Where's the second target going to be? And that's the, the work you've got to do before you get in here. If you haven't done that work when you get there and Cool, Paul. You're, you're, at, you're at a losing point already because you're kind of making it up as you go along. And that's when you're like more likely to check and measure and do all those sorts of things, look at the gun, which we don't really want to do. First thing, the moment your eyes are drawn to the gun and you're looking at a gap and you're checking, it's game over. You might get lucky, but it's very inconsistent. When I shot the course on Thursday, I found it definitely didn't start easy. It's not going well. Stand one was a rude awakening, and for sure, stand two wasn't a gimme either. Stand three, where we're headed now, picked a lot of pockets. So you've got a sequence stand? Yeah, so we do three different targets. We've got a left to right rabbit, a left to right sort of curling crosser, and a right to left sort of rising 
climbing crosser. The idea here is four pairs on report, going through a sequence, so no singles, no full use of the gun, it's just a sequence of three targets um, in different combinations. And it's just to add that bit of variety, and also it makes people think a little bit more about hold points. And so when we come to the sim pair, actually it's a lot more trickier where you're going to kill the first one to give yourself time to shoot the second one, all that sort of stuff. Taking people out of their comfort zone. So what, for this one, why don't you shoot it? And then just talk us through your thoughts. Yeah, definitely. And we'll see if I can hit them, that's the main thing. First pair A, B. I put a pro piston in for the rabbit. It's what, 15, 20 yards? Yeah, and that's exactly what you're going to want to do. You know, that's where you want to use these different shot sizes, different cartridges that are in the range to give you as much advantage as possible for the target, yeah, right? It's not worth changing choke for potentially, but it's a nice quick. Because we're shooting a sequence of three different targets, you've got to shoot those longer crosses as well. So you don't really want to go, ah. You, to... you don't want a cylinder in. 100%, because then you're going to be at a, maybe a disadvantage with some of the longer targets out there. Change the shower rather than changing chokes, and that gives you the advantage of that rabbit, and then you can put your pro one seven halves out on the crosses. And actually, when we look at it, obviously we've got a big open terrain behind us, so it's quite difficult to judge the distance of those targets. Yeah. They're always going to look a little bit further away than they are because there's not a lot of backdrop out there. And that's sort of part of my job in terms of where we put stands and setting the targets is to try and trick people into thinking actually how far away is that or how quick is that. Like, that's the skill in it anyway. So the rabbit's a fairly easy shot, just come for its back edge, slightly off the front, nothing too complicated. Exactly that, so we're just making sure that we're holding out, watching it beat the gun, as soon as it's beating the gun, taking the gun straight to the burn pull the trigger and just trusting our eyes with that one. And obviously then, you know, for example, the first pair, we then go up to the crosser. So the danger with the crosser there, you can see it's coming from quite a long way off and we're shooting it quite late over here. In my opinion, that's the best kill point. What a lot of people mistake they'll make is they'll set up and shoot the rabbit and think, right, I've got the rabbit shot and rush back here for a hole point on the incomer, yep. crossing bird. And they're connected with it way too long. It's fair to say that it's fairly slow, but it's not too close. The danger is we shoot the rabbit, come right back to get connected with the incomer. But then actually we've got a, this connection here. We spend a long time with the bird. We watch the gun, watch the space, measure, check. And we're in, you know, we end up in no man's land. And we want to kill it here. So we're better off killing the rabbit holding out further and just watching that tight come into the gun as it beats the gun then we can get connected from the back of it and make the shot from there whereas the seabird is different again in that it, you kind of need to just get on and break it yeah i mean you've got several kill points right so i would say like the seabird you know you'll see a lot of people want to take it on early and then some people shoot a bit later so that's again subject to where you want to position your hold point based on the kill point you know if we're going to kill it later here we don't want to be right back here again so we'll spend so much time with the target we'll check we'll measure we'll be you know be a complete waste of time so we want to hold out again for me i'm killing it sort of probably two thirds of the way across its flight yeah so i'm holding out as soon as that clay beats the gun i'm inserting into the back of it and just drive the gun through the line pretty much all swing through just for a me, different it's, it's gun speed exactly that. it's the safest and most consistent method to shoot so you know we're always going to get a line the speed of the target it's reliable right and that's that's why we're going to use that yeah and then obviously when we come to the same pair the two crosses the danger there we think right okay i want to take the seabird on so I'm going to attack the seabird and then try and find this bee bird and make a rush shot so we attack the seabird we're holding out again watching that bee bird beat the gun then just driving through the line of it to make the shot and that's the point in a stand like this is just to put you under pressure same targets but you're now having to kill that seabird way quicker in the it's, sim pair it's taking you out your comfort zone um, and certainly that's where you'll see potentially the lesser experienced shots where they get into a bit of a model with it because they don't really have a plan for their setup of the pair. There's just over 40 different machines out there. So obviously you've got super sporting stands, your full use gun singles, you know, your sequences yeah. like this. Shooting as a report and a sim, yeah. that's a different target. Exactly, you're getting lots of different combinations. That in itself is a challenge. Yeah, exactly that. And that's, that's why it's called the Pro One Challenge, right? The Pro One isn't all about clay shooting. This is a proper event, somewhere you can come and hang out all day. Or, like some of the folk here, a full week. I think like any major competition or major event, creating an atmosphere is really important. So the one thing we managed to do here at the Pro One Challenge, which we've always done um, for the years we've run it, is a trade village. This year, the trade village has doubled in size, with great food on offer, and a load of trade exhibitors offering everything a shooter could need. I've been here with a stand meeting lots and lots of customers and I was really fortunate to be able to shoot with the gun room squad on the first day. And what an event. There's so much variety with the shoot, there's no eyesight tests at all and it's just good fun. Everybody's coming up with a smile on the face and if you're not smiling when you're shooting, you need to change your cartridges, change your glasses or get some shooting lessons. With the sun blazing overhead, this area became the central hub to catch up with old friends. Oh, what a great event every year. I shot yesterday in the lovely damp weather and the wind, which was fabulous. Shot stand six, which I think was brilliant. This is this lovely tower bird, which is like a rabu, 
coming from it and it's dropping down. I didn't touch this dropping target on my round and I wasn't alone. So this was Josh and I's next stop. Josh, help me. What are you supposed to do with this weird, dropping, loopy, incoming standard thing? Stand six, one of our true six point stands. So the A Bird is a primatic chandelle off, off a lifted tower. Um, standard clay, actually got trains running on the track, not under a huge amount of power. But the line is changing the whole time. And I think that's what brings that technical element rather than, oh, it's a looper out there, let's just drive on through it and give it a big gap, right? A lot of this will be, again, where you want to kill it. And also, technique is massive here. Our approach to the target and our setup, right, where do I want to kill it? And then working back from there in terms of where your whole point is and therefore where you're going to start with moving. What and is the best way? You've got to be in a comfort zone where you feel it's most consistent to kill. Well, that looper, we actually only do twice, right? We've got a full use of the gun. In theory, we can try to find the target if we haven't got a plan. And then we've only got to shoot it once in, in the double. We look at the pair and we say, actually, right, it's the second bird in the pair. So actually, if I miss the first bird, let's double barrel it, right? The first bird's that incoming crow. Yeah, let's get, get, it one, in the let's get one on the card rather than rather than none. So um, yeah, so we'll, we'll say we'll have a look at the target, see what it's doing, um, and I want you to make a plan and think. Right, where do I think I want to kill it, and therefore how am I going to get there? Amazing how much easier it is in my mind now that we're not in a competition environment. <laughs> my plan would be to hold just off the right edge of that bale, let it yep. pass the gun, not too much, and then. Nice slow progression into a gap in front. Cool, so you've got the idea of where you want to kill it. Yeah. And just the main thing is, let's not try to check and measure and see a gap. It's not as if it's being driven down, right? It's coming out and, it's, and then it's sort of gaining speed as it comes down, but it's not driven down under a lot of yeah. power, which is quite an important thing to look at. And obviously with it being a looping target, it's not dropping here, it's dropping out there, right? So that's where the line comes into it. It's probably not sovereign territory. No, but at the end of the day, that's what they're there for. For something like that, where you're less confident, let's make ourselves even more confident, put those in. So we, know, we know we've got, got it in there. You know that one pellet's gonna smash it, and if I don't put the gun quite in the right place, you've got the confidence that... You might get lucky. Yeah. yeah. Golden pellet. Yeah, a lot easier outside of a competition scenario. Yeah, and obviously like, you haven't got the pressure of, oh, I want these two on the car because I want to make a score. The main thing there is like, we just don't move until that clay comes past the gun. Yeah, so yep. it's holding out like you did. As soon as the clay's beating the gun, let's go in through that line. Just let, let our eyes take over and let it do the work. Again, not going to see many like that. And, and that's, cool, like I say, that's why we put a couple on there. We thought I, thought I could have been really horrible and put several on in the sequences. But I thought, right, let's just put a couple on there you know, just to give people taste of something slightly different um, without actually, if they can't shoot something like that, they'll be completely demoralized because they don't know where it is. The other two birds in the sequence are neither here nor there. Yeah, exactly. Watch a lot of people miss a C, but I think that was just competition scenario. You're just used to giving that a load of power. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's the secret, you know, you're coming from there and going there. I mean, with the seabird there, we obviously shoot that as a RAF pair. So Raphael pair, it's not on report. It's hold the button down as soon as the trap's fully cycled, it'll release it straight away again. Yeah. Um, so it's coming, the timing can be slightly different to a non-report pair. So again, it's just to put you out of that comfort zone and make you think a little bit. Actually, on the target that's a Raphael pair, it's relatively straightforward. Thank you very much. I feel significantly better now. I've actually hit it. Well, there you go. Before we move on, as much as sovereigns can be a confidence booster, sometimes they are kind of necessary, right? Yeah, obviously, we're at stand seven, so we know what's coming. The high tower once again employed for a target crossing, but quartering away as well. Yeah, exactly that. And obviously it being the distance it is in the height, um, that will scare quite a lot of people. So it's an unusual angle. Something we won't see on a normal port and layout week in, week out, right? It's opportunity to stick those parkour six and a half, just give you that extra, raise, that extra, extra bit of hitting power. Listen, your standard Pro 1 7.5, your Sovereign 7.5, Sovereign 8, whatever. I know they'll gonna, break it. They're going to kill that, right? But it's, it's up here, we want to trick. Oh. What we've got here, obviously, the tower's not the trickier target, and then we come down to that little steady batu. So we've still, a lot of people come in thinking, oh, the tower, like, I need to really work on this and focus on this. They put so much effort into that. The amount of scorecards I've seen that miss this little batu. They put so much focus onto this and really wind up for this, and then come back, and actually a simple thing here, for example, the tower's the first target, right? So people come into the stand, you see so many people, right-handers, that shoot way across their body. So they set themselves up to shoot the tower bird, probably come around way too far, and come back to the battle and we're at such an awkward angle here, we just pull ourselves completely offline or actually end up accelerating all the way through it because our bodies come around so much. 
For me, we're coming into that stand. My left foot being a right hand is always going to be square to I want to kill the target. So for me, both kill points on both targets are pretty similar. You've got sort of five degrees either side exactly. of your foot. Exactly. So I'm setting myself up for the tower bird here and then turning back through my core to keep my shoulders square. Drive the gun through the line of the bird there, bang. Come back, hold out for the batu, let the batu beat the gun, and I can come back and it's a very small shot. My feet position doesn't need to change for this. Pair. This is one of those perhaps two cartridges jobs. Sovereigns for the big one, probably shoot pistons at the pistons, second. Exactly, it's a batu, it's a very thin clay, you know, a nine shot on a batu at that distance is going to crunch it, no problem. Just you know, increasing your odds. Yeah, you know, and you want every advantage going around a, going around a sporting course. Um, like I say, on the, because it's only two targets, we could even maybe open up to like a cylinder or a super cylinder. You know, this gun's actually teagued. If I was shooting this properly, I'd put the teague super cylinder in for that little batu, and I shoot a 5.8 standard choke normally, so 5 eighths for that crossing bird is, is plenty. So I've always been a one choke for everything, but actually why not? If I change my shell, why not change the choke and give myself maximum advantage and more importantly, help focus my mind for the task at hand? 100% and I say on your sporting courses, you'll regularly have one tougher target, one easier target, or one closer target, one further away. Open up the chokes if you need to, yeah? Give yourself as much opportunity to break that target as possible. Make it easy, right? At the end of the day, we, it hits a hit, right? It doesn't really matter if we take a chip off it. They don't grade them on the card. We just got to break them. So give yourself as much opportunity as possible. This target was hard, but now I know it's clearly hittable. Where we're heading next, stand 10, had too much simpler targets. But to spice it up, Josh had broken up the sight line with five straw bales. And this caught a lot of people off guard. I watched a lot of people shooting this on Friday. I came up for the day just to hang out. I watch a lot of people missing what is a very steady rabbit. And it is, it's amazing. Those rabbits are like, what, 25 yards away from us? And thank you very much. Nice water. Good, isn't it? Well, it's really quite warm. Positively American, sir. Yeah, exactly. And obviously whole branded cans, in cans, recyclable, saving the planet. Me, me, just one last a pair of rabbits, one left to right, one right to left. They're 25 yards away. We've got five bales in front of them. Take those bales out of the way and it's really straightforward. And it's amazing, actually, the kill points for both rabbits are between the bales. If the bales weren't there, you'd kill them in exactly the same place. But just having those bales there, the amount of people that you see them get confused and almost panic and they're like, oh, right, it's, it's quite funny. It boils back to things we've discussed in the past. Trust and confidence. Because you can't see the rabbit doesn't mean that you shouldn't be confident your gun is swinging at the same speed it was before it went behind a bale. Exactly that, and it's all timing, yeah? So we're going to shoot the left to right bird first. We're going to kill it between the sort of second and third bale. Yep. Um, and then we'll shoot the right to left second and clip between the third and fourth bale. Yep. The main thing is our hold point, probably just on the edge of the bale. So as soon as the clay beats the gun, I'm going to try to drive into it and pull the trigger. You'll see so many people here bringing the gun right back to the traps to try and find the, the rabbit. They're with it, then they've lost it, then they're with it, and they're like, they don't know where to pull the trigger. So I started on the left-hand side of the first bell and the right-hand side of that bell over there, so that as soon as the gun passed, I started by move and I had speed by the time it moved. Exactly that. So the main thing here is the clay's got to beat the gun. So as soon as the clay beats the gun, we just drive into the bird and pull the trigger. And as we get to it, we pull the trigger and just trust our eyes. The gun speed will kill it. We've just got to rely on our timing to, to be right. Oh, he's good. Well, yeah, you shot that with pistons. I opted for parkour because if I get a pellet into a rabbit, it will break. It's 25 yards away, 20 yards away. Yeah, you're good. And obviously the rabbit clay is a harder clay, right? So actually for me, like, definitely I would put a pair of cylinders in here, open right up. That's exactly what I've done. Give yourself as much opportunity as possible. At the end of the day, because of the bales, our kill window is quite small anyway. Yep. And you know what rabbits are like, they like to bounce. If there's no bales there and it bounces, we can sort of say, oh, actually, let's just take a second and get it on when it's on the, on the flat or shoot it in the air. Here, you're kind of restricted to that window, so you've got to make a decision on what to do there, unless you let it go another bale bit. The range of shells that Hull have on the market available, those Pro Piston 9s, that would be my go-to cartridge for a target like that. On a usual round, that's what I would have picked. But between stands four and eight, I dropped far too many. And I walked into stand nine, had a little word with myself, loaded up with sovereigns, more or less for the rest of the course, because I I needed something. On the flip side, let's say if you were cutting around there and you're shooting fairly steady, you think, okay, come to this, I need as much, much opportunity as possible. That's where you can switch to your nines, because you know it's gonna be a big pattern out there, give you as much chance to break the target at that distance. This is sort of the whole thing with Pro 1, right, is how you can set a 25-yard gimme target and make someone miss it, because you've been in a weird sequence I, of pairs, it's I been think, in an odd sim, it's stuck behind a bale. I think that, and that 
is shooting in general, right? Certainly with sporting, then they, it's fun, it's a hobby. And that's what the pro one we kind of wanted to make it about. Anyone can go and chuck a trap out 60 yards away and throw a monster crosser. Yeah, it's quite cool to shoot and you get a bit of satisfaction when you hit one. And there's a few out there. Yeah, but actually the whole idea, we've got over 40 machines in use, 15 stands. It's a lot of shooting, 120 targets. So you're seeing lots of combinations, lots of pairs. So, you know, we don't need massive targets all the time to catch people out. Just a few different speeds and angles, that's enough to catch people out and go from there. This is exactly what we're trying to do here. Since first shooting the Pro One, I've seen some improvement in my shooting ability, and I still have a long way to go. But since its inception, the Pro One has always proven to be a hard but fun course, making sure us regular guys leave smiling. It's a tricky balance to strike while still making it testing enough for the real talent. We've just finished the 2024 Hull Pro One Challenge, uh, myself and Daphne over from Holland, which has been fantastic. It was a lovely event. The second time I was here at Barbary, excellent targets. Overall, I think we did an excellent job today. Yeah. Struggled on hard targets and missed some really easy ones. Really enjoyable. And thanks to Josh and the team for putting up a shoot like this. Absolutely amazing. I love the one and so does everyone else. I mean, the Saturday, Sunday sold out within a couple of days and the whole shoot all week and they put an extra day on and it sold out. So it can't be just me that loves it. I don't see anyone with a frown on their face. Josh always puts on a fair course. I've always enjoyed the day, especially the weather like today. I think we've been very lucky with weather today. I'm exactly. expecting great things from you, really. I will try. I will. Hopefully you'll be buying the beers because I've beaten you. It's very likely. <laughs> it's very likely. This is ideal as conditions. Exactly. I'm going to lose, aren't I? I've done this competition for the last five years and I've always been on the last stand. The shooters come to me. They've all got a smile on their face. I haven't shot very well, but I've enjoyed it. The targets are always good. Except this stand when Josh always puts something a little bit sneaky on. But they do enjoy it. And I've seen some really good shooting. And I've seen some absolute rubbish, as always. Our last stand of the Masterclass is stand 12. One that wasn't necessarily hard, but a lot of people dropped ones and twos and threes. Yeah, exactly. And obviously we've got this little sort of soft orange incoming that's coming down. Then we've got a rabu going right to left. That second target's got a lot of power after a very steady gun on the first. Correct, but it's only covering quite a small window. Obviously with it being a rabu, so a rabbit clay and a sander trap, the clay is heavier, so it's going to drop quicker. But which... carries a bit more momentum as well, yeah. right? Yeah, it's designed just as a, again, not a big distance massive gap target, just as a technical combination of technical transition between the first and second target. So that's where I'm trying to catch people out. Is this a place we could maybe move out of a swing through to give ourselves more time? we will go back into the cage in a second, you'll see our kill window is quite small. If our timing is good, we could almost watch the Rabu close on the gun then go to a space and pull the trigger. You've got to be really confident and know your timing is great. The danger is you kill the orange one because your orange one comes down, the gun is so far out from where that's coming from and actually don't let the clay get to the gun, you just shoot it thin air. So we've got to make sure the clay gets somewhere near the gun before we move. For me, I'm actually still going to shoot the incomer. I'm actually going to bring the gun back ever so slightly, let the rabbit beat the gun then just drive in through the line of it. Why wouldn't you take that A-bird on early? Is it just because of transition to B? You want to give yourself as much opportunity to kill the target as possible where it's clearest. It sort of flops over the bank then up early. It's such a fine line to get it right. It's not coming straight down. It does have a little bit of right hand in it. So there it's easy to miss the line. So we let it come on just so the gun ends up then in the right place, lay it into the right place for that rabu. Just hold tight, let the rabu beat the gun and then just drive through a line and pull the trigger. The success of this event is down to a lot of factors all of us that come and shoot, all of the team at Barbary as well as the refs, all of the vendors that come and exhibit, and of course, the main sponsor of this event, Hull Cartridge Company. Guys, we're almost done for another year. There's some good scores on the door, some big scores. Agreed. We've just had Richard Bunning put in a 116. I think that leaves him at the top with Matt Hansos on 116. We started this challenge, what, six years ago mm. with 500 entries. We're now this year just shy of 1,100 entries, which I think is incredible. Exciting. I think we're getting the formula right, guys. Johnny, you filmed the last few years we've done. We've had loads of people over the week come up to us and say, hey, like I've seen the shoot on YouTube. 
I want to come and come and have a go and I think that's you know really helped push it. Well we don't lie in the videos now this is one of the most fun shoots of the year if you never know what you're going to walk into out there. <laughs> but that's what we want that's what makes people come back year on year because Josh and his team and Hugh they give us something different every year and it's so exciting. David from me from me and the shooters who I've met thank you for supporting this Josh thank you for taking the concept and making it a reality. We like to support the industry. We like to support the sport. We love talking to the shooting public. We like shooting ourselves. It's a celebration of shooting. And just like that, with all the scores in, it was time for the super final. Top six scores overall across the five days of shooting. We're going to a six man super final. That's a 25 bird sequence. This year we're gonna do it slightly different. We're gonna run three different shooting positions. First station will have a mixture of on report pairs. We'll move to station two where we'll do some simultaneous pairs. Moving further back to station three where we'll have some single targets for use of the gun. And hopefully concluding that we'll have a Pro One Challenge champion for 2024. With one absence, the top five shooters stood up in front of the crowd and started to crush some extreme targets. Watching these super finals is always an experience I look forward to. And as they progressed through the pegs, positions changed up and down. Until finally, Richard Folds and Billy Greenwood had to shoot off on the fourth peg for the top spot. With the legendary Richard Folds coming out on top. Congratulations, sir. Thank you that very much. That was impressive to watch, as well as obviously a solid score on the ground. How'd you find it? I thought it was a great event. I mean, Barbary, as always, never failed to deliver. Super final was great. You know, the targets were just right. There was stuff there to miss, but stuff there that you could claw back. Maybe not on that last peg. That uh, looked. <laughs> that was impressive. I mean, we, we all impressive. know what Josh is like. Sometimes <laughs> you'll get him 10 yards or 110 yards, you never quite know. It was really good, thoroughly enjoyable, and uh, you know I think every year this is a definite must-attend event. There's nothing in the UK quite like the Pro One Challenge. Second place in B class. Regardless of whether you're one of the lucky few who can consider winning this competition, or whether you're just looking for a great experience, I can see no reason to not attend. If it fills up as quickly as it did last year, you better be ready for registration to open for next year's Pro One. My thanks to all of those whose hard work made this event as great as it was. Congratulations to all of the winners across all the classes. And a massive thank you to Hull Cartridge Company for their continued support of this event. I can't wait to see what's in store next year. Thank you for watching guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you wanna support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.